Hey guys, it's James over at the Wrestling Epicenter, encouraging you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and follow the Wrestling Epicenter here on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or wherever you're catching this. We hope you'll follow us and be part of our social media experience. We're going to get right to the video after our long intro in just a second here, but I just wanted to kind of tell you why my voice sounds like this. I was not feeling well yesterday and like literally two minutes before the phone rang for our interview with Trey Miguel I ended up in the bathroom throwing up a piece of hubba bubba that I think I ate in the fifth grade I mean it was it was quite substantial it was quite uncomfortable um of course the first thing that you think of because I'm out here in Arizona is oh no it's the COVID but in reality, I think it just was a bit of heat stroke, to be perfectly honest. It is brutal heat out here right now. We're talking 115 almost every day. The overnight lows, when you take the trash out at 10 o'clock at night, is 92. Crazy how it is right now. I've been out here almost 20 years. It's not new to me, but every year it seems to wallop you upside the head, and it's walloped me this time. Anyway... Impact Wrestling presents Slammiversary, the event that the whole wrestling world is talking about July 18th, just a couple of days away now, a week from this Saturday. At the time we recorded it, it was 11 days. At the time we're posting it, it's 10 days. July 18th, live from Nashville. And it's going to be a great show. Lots of surprises on tap. And one of the men who are going to be appearing in the main event, a new main eventer, a young guy getting an opportunity at the top of the card, is Trey Miguel. He is our guest this week. Trey is a guy who I've been watching for a little while now. And if you go back to our Andrew Everett interview a while ago, he was put over as a guy that Andrew Everett wanted to see in Impact Wrestling, him and Zachary Wentz and a couple other guys. It's going to be a hell of a show. I can't wait. Impact Wrestling is ready to set the wrestling world on its ear. Make everybody take notice again if they haven't already. So this is going to be one amazing, amazing show. I am sure of it. Pay-per-view, July 18th. Check out impactwrestling.com for more details. Without any further delay, let's get through our really long intro with a lot of name dropping and other goodies. And then we'll be joined by Mr... Trey Miguel, the main eventer of Slammiversary 2020. The following announcement has been paid for by the Wrestling Epicenter. Hey, hey everybody. Hey guys. Hello, ladies. Remember me? <laughs> Let me talk to you, dummies. It's now time. It's their time. Tick tock. It's showtime. For the longest running wrestling talk show in history. We are huge. Gonna be cool. You're where it's at. You smell like me. Tune in each and every week. And you better keep listening. Or I'll come out of your computer and, and turn it on for you. Or else I'm gonna kick your sick and tape then. We've been known by a few names. The needs of the many far outweigh the needs of the few. The interactive interview. Interactive interview. Oh yeah. Interactive interview. The interactive interview. Interactive interview. The interactive interview. Interactive wrestling radio. 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 The Blaze. Blaze, 1260 AM. The Blaze. The Blaze. Blaze. The Blaze Rock. And a lot of other names. Weekend Warrior of Wrestling. The Pile Driver. The Epa Wrestling Center. Street Count Wrestling. <laughs> the Hour Slab. But it's all one show. The Wrestling Epicenter. Wrestling Epicenter. The Wrestling Epicenter. The Epicenter. Wrestling Epicenter, dude. The Wrestling Epicenter. Don't get off. And your host from day one. By ignorance or arrogance. James Walsh. Wake up, sleepyheads. Dr. Carolus. It all starts. What a rush. Oh, boomer sooner. Thank you very much. Rock. I got two words for you. Thumbs down. 
breaking necks and cashing checks. Burn. I've heard a lot about you guys. <laughs> Check it out. Get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> you win. But I'm desperately out of time. So what you gonna do when Blaze of Mania runs wild on you? Now. This is Desmond Xavier, and you're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio. Welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio. On the Newsmaker line with us right now is a gentleman who will be main eventing. That's got to be cool to hear. Main eventing, Slammiversary, one of the biggest pay-per-views of Impact Wrestling. In a four-way dance, of course, I'm speaking of Trey. Are you with me, Mr. Trey Miguel? I'm doing great. How are you, brother? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to have you on. Like I mentioned in the intro, you're going to be main eventing the pay-per-view that's coming up here in just about 11 days. What's your uh, thoughts going into Slammiversary? It, two thoughts crossed my mind immediately. Because, mm-hmm. uh, at one of my best friend's house, uh, visiting his family, his dad just had surgery. I just wanted to check on him and he asked, uh, when, when's your main event? And I said, I think 11 days. So one, I was correct on the math without even thinking and uh, uh number two i think it's it's crazy to think about because um a year ago i didn't have a match at San anniversary until the day of you know everyone showed up and they were like hey we're having a, a x division opener and you will have something to do and that was that it, it wasn't an advertised match it wasn't on the bill anywhere and uh you know so to go from not even originally being scheduled or advertised for the biggest pay-per-view of the summer to main eventing it is it is it's quite a difference on the on the spectrum scale. Absolutely, and I mean I've been a fan of yours for for quite a while now, so it's a pleasure to have you on, and it's a pleasure to see you you know succeeding in this way and in this role. Um, it, it looks like it's going to be a brand new you know cusp of main eventers for Impact Wrestling as we head into Slammiversary. Um, two of you guys, and then you got the uh, the guy who's been to the dance quite a few times, and Eddie Edwards. But I guess I wanted to ask you about your opponents. Obviously, we know two of them. Uh, first things first, how about Eddie Edwards? What is your thoughts on facing Eddie Edwards in this big match? Um, it's it's something I'm, I have to be worried about it because that's a man that's experienced. He's been he's been there. He's been in this position before. He knows how to handle it. He knows how to deal with the pressure. Um, I, on the other hand, have it. So he has a big advantage, but from a learning point, I'm going to learn a lot in this match because Eddie Edwards is, for lack of a better term, the GOAT of Impact Wrestling. He's the he's a veteran there, and I'm going to get the closest, like, studying experience of, like, you know what I'm saying, just how to go about this. And uh, I, I haven't gotten to work with Eddie. It's something that I've actually looked forward to and just haven't had the opportunity to do, and doing it on the grandest stages that we can it is a really cool thing to do. And I'm going to have to step up to the plate. Absolutely. And the other guy you've had a long history with, and that is another young guy getting a chance at the top of the spot, the top of the card, if you will, that is ACE Austin. Uh, know that he had some problems with you in the past and involved your mom, in fact, but uh, what is your thoughts on ACE Austin? Um, I don't like Gambit or X-Men, so Screw Ace Austin. <laughs> uh, all right. I, I, I'll pretend I got that one. <laughs> all right. So here we go. So the fourth man, we don't know who this is going to be. And we've seen all the commercials. In fact, Impact Wrestling has been pretty much the talk of the wrestling town of late, trying to figure out who's coming in, what's going to be the fourth guy in Slammiversary and who else is going to show up because this is promising to be a show that's going to change the paradigm, if you will, of wrestling. What's your thoughts heading into that and and, uh, the mystery opponent? Is that an advantage or a disadvantage, not knowing who's going to be the fourth man? It's a disadvantage for me because I don't like mysteries. I don't like (laughs) Scooby-Doo. I love Scooby-Doo. I don't like mystery meat, though. That was the thing in school, and I wasn't a fan of that. I ain't a fan of this mystery either. Because it could be anybody. It could be uh, it could be someone that was a world champion. It could be someone that was a sumo wrestler before. It could be an Olympian. It could be anyone. And I have no idea who it's going to be. So um, they know who they are, though. And they have all the opportunity to study all the tape that they feel is necessary. And that's a big advantage for them. So I think, honestly, going into this, that Eddie and whoever this mystery opponent have the two biggest advantages out of everyone in the match. Awesome. And that is a worry. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Now, not about Slammiversary. You guys and the Rascals have been a, a bright spot for Impact Wrestling for the past two years, but the funniest segments on the show for sure. Um, I guess my first question is, is it as real as it seems that you guys are just lifelong friends? Absolutely. So actually, I mean, we all lived together at one point. We trained together. Um, the first time I uh, met Zach, we showed up to an independent show in literally the exact same outfit, and it was super weird. And then we showed up to another show like a month later wearing the exact same outfit. And to tell the truth, Zach and I were kind of signing each other up like, I don't know if I like this dude or not. And then we wrestled one another, and we just had a chemistry. And the moment we got to the back, I knew I'd found a brother. And then I met Desmond, and then I got to train with Desmond, and then we finally got to wrestle one another, and the exact same thing happened there. And those two had already been traveling together and working with one another on a regular basis. So to get brought into that really meant a whole lot to me because I was really young, and um, where I was in my career, the next step up is where Zach and Des were, and that's where I was really trying to like grind my teeth to get to. And a lot of people aren't really so helping in wrestling anymore when they're trying to you know, make the climb themselves. It's hard to worry about the next man when you're still climbing. So for them to kind of, I don't want to say they slowed down what they were doing because they absolutely in no way slowed down at all, but they made sure that they, that they helped me pick it up to get there too. And uh, it is just as real outside of wrestling as it is inside of wrestling. I FaceTime Zach every day. I send Des weird stuff all the time. We, <laughs> we video game all the time on PlayStation. And literally, I mean, we we walked his Zach's wife down the aisle for his wedding. And like, it's just, wow. you know, the, the cameras don't change a thing. Awesome, awesome. So here's my question then. With the mystery of who attacked you and almost took you out of this opportunity, and with the with the fact that you are getting the chance that the other two aren't getting, Will we see after Slammiversary, regardless the result, any more from you guys in your treehouse? Yes, you absolutely will. <laughs> All right. That's the answer I wanted to hear. So there was a time not too long ago that guys that do your style, air, aerial combat, the, the moves that we see, maybe weren't necessarily featured at the top of the card. What's changed in wrestling that now that's where we're at? That's where almost every company is featuring the guys that can do the incredible athletics that you can do? Uh, if I could say there's one thing that changed it, I'd say it was the pipe bomb. The pipe bomb? The CM Punk promo? Absolutely. Wow. It was very real, and it came from a high place, and it was, it, was, it was true. Everything he said was true. The, the little guy wasn't, wasn't made to be on the marquee, and I feel like that, that shuffled the way a lot of people thought, and you had to kind of take a step back and look at everyone that's participating in this thing that you air quote love called professional wrestling. If you love something, you have to be open-minded and you have to, you kind of, we have to ditch tradition sometimes. It's, this is no longer a big man's game. Some of the smaller guys in wrestling are some of the best wrestlers in the entire world. And it, it, you just can't deny stuff like that when it's evident, you know, if it's put in front of you and you see it and you watch it, it's like, how can you deny someone's talent based on their size? It's just, it's unrealistic. So um, I think the way CM Punk delivered that message to the world, it kind of opened a lot of people's eyes. Like maybe we've been doing this wrong. And since then, I've seen a huge change in wrestling that I would say has only been for the better and more beneficial. So that way more people can be seen and actually get an opportunity. Because if you love wrestling and you want to be a part of it and you're a good person, then nothing should exclude you from being the best wrestler at any company you go to. It shouldn't be your color, your size, your weight, or anything like that. If you love it and you're good at it, you should be as eligible to reach any goal in wrestling as the next thing. All right. Absolutely. So I'm a little bit older than you. I'll be honest with you. I think I got about 13 years on you. Um, so when I was a kid, I remember standing on the diving board and thinking I could do the Macho Man elbow and stuff like that. When did you realize that you had this unbelievable ability to do these acrobatic moves that I wouldn't even dream even when I was as young as you are? Um, so what's crazy is I, I've been wrestling for 11 years now. And yeah, I know. First, <laughs> I want to say six six years of my career were pretty deep as far as what I was able to do and what I was allowed to do. I was put in a lot of positions to where I was uh, – 
wrestling guys that were much bigger than me, much more experienced, and I didn't have the opportunity to showcase as much as I could do. And mm -hmm. what I could do back then what isn't what I can do now. And a lot of that stuff came with having to teach myself. I really, I never did gymnastics. I, I can hardly hit a backflip on the ground, but there, there's, there's just a special comfortability that comes with being inside the wrestling ring and closing your eyes, taking a deep breath, and just breaking it down mechanically, what you have to do in your brain, and trusting that, like, for the fans entertainment this will go well i'm not i don't know how to do any of the stuff i'm doing i just kind of throw caution to the wind and do it for the fans i like zach used to tumble in high school and that's his advantage to some of the crazy stuff he can do i don't have one i just kind of i figured out the tricks that i can do and try to perfect them as much as i can and always just take that deep breath and give it to the fans because they deserve it all right. You could have fooled me, by the way. You look like you know exactly what you're doing when you're doing those moves. I will, I, I will admit, I was a lifeguard for a single summer, and I could, I did teach myself how to six thirty on a diving board, but that is much, much different than a top rope. <laughs> it's a softer landing, too, when you go into the water. I believe you. I absolutely do. All right, so I mentioned it. Impact Wrestling right now is kind of at the forefront. July is Impact Wrestling's month. Everybody's paying attention. It could be because of Slammiversary as well as all the guys that could be coming in. But from a guy who's been there for a while now, is it cool to finally see Impact Wrestling getting the recognition from the entire wrestling world that, that it deserves? It is because right now we're all the same. There's no bells and whistles. And it's really going to boil down to who's producing the best product. And I've been since the moment, since before we've shown up, I believe that Impact was literally the best product on TV. But the, uh, just people, people were just turning a blind eye to it for whatever reason, maybe. And I think that because of what's going on right now, we don't have a crown and mm -hmm. everything, all the wrestling on paper looks the same. So it really will boil down to the talent we have, how they're used, and how well they're stepping up to what they're given. And I feel like Impact is really just like killing it on that front right now absolutely i think it's the best wrestling that there is right now no doubt about it um so the final question is what would winning that world title coming away from slammiversary as impact wrestling world heavyweight champion the real world champion not to offend moose what would that mean to you if you did walk away with that world title um so <laughs> Uh, I honestly, I, I can't tell you because I can't even picture what it's like to hold it. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like I'm saying, um, if you asked me in January, if I'd be here, I'd say no. If you asked me where I thought I'd be in January right now, I'd say I'd be the X Division champion. This is a vast difference. This is the world championship. This is, this is being the face of impact. And if, if that did happen for me, I, I can't tell you that words would physically be able to come out of my mouth because the amount of tears that I'd probably be shedding. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Any final thoughts as we head into 11 days from now? Yes. And the math was right, by the way, earlier on. That's awesome. Thank you for that reassurance. And no, man, I'm just, uh, I'm, ex I'm as excited as I believe the rest of the world is. I genuinely believe that the slam anniversary that is about to happen in 11 days is going to be the best pay-per-view of the entire year for professional wrestling. I really do believe that. And with that being said, I urge everyone to watch it. I really do. I put my best dollar on it, that this will, this will be the best wrestling you've watched all year. Awesome. All right. Before I let you go, do you mind if I ask for one little favor from you? You probably already know what it's going to be. <laughs> Absolutely. What is it? Do you mind if I ask for a, a, an ID and a drop, if you want to call it a drop, uh, just saying this is Trey and you're, Listening to the Wrestling Epicenter. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want me to do the Wayne's we World? Already? Yeah, I was going to say, do you want me to do the whole Wayne's World count? Let's do that. That's uh, five, four, three, two. This is Trey Miguel from Impact Wrestling, and you are listening to the Wrestling Epicenter. The preceding announcement was paid for by the Wrestling Epicenter. I'm to listen, and if you like what you heard, I'm glad. If you didn't like what you heard, we'll go fuck yourself. <laughs> Most people done hung up on me. <laughs> we had a lovely conversation. <laughs> what a show. Oh, mercy, Daddy. I'm the radio dial. Don't hang up. Bye-bye.